focus of today's lesson is going to be looking at how bitmap images are encoded and this week we're going to be focusing on multimedia so eventually we're going to be looking at sound vectors and how compression works as well so again a bit of a recap of all the things that you focused on at IGCSC but perhaps with a slightly bit more depth so let's begin on screen you're going to see a few key terms and you need to make sure that you jot these key terms down and again these are quite important so make sure you know how to define a bitmap image what the pixel is which is the smallest pixel and even or a dot uh, that makes up an image make sure that you know the difference between bit depth and color depth and bit depth is the number of bits used to represent the the file for example you, you could have 8-bit color, 2-bit color, 16-bit, 24-bit and the color depth is how many colors you can get. So for 8-bit color you can get about 256 colors in there and so forth. So if you wanted a true color chances are that you'll probably be looking at something along the lines of 16-bit or 24-bit true color. And similarly make sure that you know image resolution, screen resolution, pixel density, the number of you know pixels that you get on a screen. So sometimes you hear ppi or ppcm and that's pixels per centimeters that's how devices are sold so just need to know what they actually mean and eventually i think we're probably not going to be covering uh, this today but vector images are quite useful finally the key term file header that every bitmap image or generally every file normally has a file header which is at the start of a file and tells you what that is we're going to be talking a bit more about that later on as well today so do pause the video and go through the key terms. Let's start with bitmap images. Now bitmap images are made of pixels and you knew this from IGCSE. And the image is stored in a two dimensional matrix of pixels. So you only get length and height. You know, we, we don't talk about the depth across because it's not three dimensional. And a simple 256 color image requires eight bits or a byte, which is the amount of colors you can probably fit in 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 that particular bit range for true color obviously 24 bits are required which allows more than 16 million colors and the number of bits used to represent a pixel is basically called the bit depth it also generates the color depth which means that the amount of colors in a particular bit range that you can use an example is that for a one bit image there are only two choices of colors black and white and if you go for a two bit image you will go two to the power of two which is four colors available to you and that's the process of generating the color depth. Okay, time for you to do some work. Try to find out how HTML is used to control the color depth of each pixel on screen and how is HTML used in the design stage of web screen layouts. So when we're designing web pages, what kind of things do we think about? So try to find some information about it. This should take you about seven to 10 minutes. Okay, let's explore bit depth versus color depth in a bit more detail. Bit depth is the number of bits used to represent a single pixel, for example, 8 or 24 bits. Color depth is the, then the amount of colors available. So if you're looking at the images on your screen, you will probably see that the painter has a 1-bit depth image, which is purely black and white. And then when you go to 2-bit depth, you've got some shades of gray popping in. And obviously with 4-bit depth, you can then have some basic colors. And of course, when you go up to 8 bits and you have 256 color, you can just have a decent representation of the real world. However, it's only when you get to 16-bit and 24-bit, that's when you can get photorealism and the kind of colors that are available in the natural world. When you're designing software and when you're looking at things like games or user interfaces, you will need to think about how the user interface or the images that you use or the color that you use in those images how that impacts your file size. So quite clearly, the greater the color depth, the greater the bit depth, the greater the file size, and the more realistic an image would be. Now, image resolution and screen resolution also have a clear impact on the way bitmap images are constructed. Image resolution refers to the number of pixels that make up an image. Screen resolution refers to the number of horizontal and vertical pixels that make up a screen display. So right now, your screen display will have a limit. It'll have a number of pixels and it could be a high definition display or it could be a 4K or Ultra HD display. However, if your image resolution is higher than your screen resolution, that can also cause your image to lose a bit of fidelity and it goes the other way as well. So if you've got a lower image resolution and a high screen resolution, you'll be able to see artifacts or the processor 
might try to render the image in a way to fill those gaps. So either you lose pixel density or you are approximating pixel density to fill a particular screen resolution at times. And that can cause pixelation. Bitmaps, as you know, can be scaled up and down. However, since the area changes, some of that sharpness is lost. And if you look at image A to E, you can see how the same type of image, when it's scaled or, or when you change things like bit depth, ends up losing pixel density. And then it starts appearing pixelated. And it could be a bit depth issue. It could be that you're scaling it up. And if you scale it up and then zoom into the same particular part of the image, it just looks a bit more horrible. So the zoom in this particular image is making A look quite clearer compared to E. Of course, all of that has an impact on the size of a bitmap image file. So think about this. If you've got an HD image 1920 by 1080p and a bit depth of 24, which is true color, the file size simply is the resolution times the bit depth. And that kind of gives you the file size in bits. You will then need to kind of work out, especially in an exam, by dividing it by eight or one or two four, or then again by one or two four to get into say megabytes, or divide by thousand, and then divide by thousand to get into megabytes. And those kind of things are something that you need to work out. And one of the key things for you to learn, it is important for you to know that each bitmap image also contains a file header, and the file header contains key elements such as the bitrate, such as the resolution and any type of compression that the image uses. This is quite important for you to remember, so make sure you jot this down. Now you have two little tasks to do. The first one is to work out the file size needed to store an ultra high definition image in 24-bit color. This is quite common. 4K resolution is very popular. How much would a single image at that resolution add true color or 24-bit color be in their file size and you might want to compare it to maybe 16 bit and 8 bit as well just to just for that sake so this should take you about five minutes the next task that you have is a problem and this is an exam type question it should take you about five minutes a software developer is preparing images for an upcoming game one of the images is 16384 pixels wide and 512 pixels high the developer decides to save it as a 256 color bitmap image Calculate the size of the image file in Gibby bytes. Pause the video and go through this. Okay, after this lesson, you should be able to explain terms like image resolution and others like screen resolution, color depth, bit depth, and so on. You should be able to explain what's in a file header, and you should be able to work out the number of bits required to encode different types of images at different resolutions in things like 16-bit colors, 24-bit colors, 8-bit colors, and so on. Next lesson, we're going to move on to vector graphics, and then we're going to look at sound and video files as well.